Welcome everyone. We'll begin in just a second here. I think I should do a show just like this tonight. What do you think? I think I should do this and go yo 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 yo. All right, hang on. Let's do the sound check. Testing, testing. Okay, well that's loud. All right. Do something a little different with the hair this time because last night I felt like it was all over the place. Hold on. All right. How does that look? ready to go wow it's Wednesday can you believe it's Wednesday hold on okay I feel like the hats a little discombobulated you know when you look in the mirror and you turn it you use your right and it's like the left side and the left and I get confused all right there we go it looks good I feel good now okay hold on I got something in my eye here okay Slow mouth pagers, it's that time. Wow, happy Wednesday. Hey, there's Mary. Happy Wednesday, Mary. Happy Merry Wednesday. <laughs> happy Wednesday, Mary. All right, you're going to get an abbreviation of Wednesday. I don't feel like trying to spell it. Okay, so <laughs> happy Wednesday. Shalom, everyone. Man, we got some people on Facebook already going, well, who's that weird looking dude? Man, I don't know, brah. Who is that dude? It's Wednesday. In Hebrew, it's Yom Revi'i. Yom Revi'i. Hope everyone's had a great day and a great week and ready for the weekend. I know I am. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Tomorrow is Thursday. It's Thursday already. Man. The week just went by so fast. I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. I'm hanging on. I got the buckles on. I'm like, Neow. it's going by so fast. I am Rabbi Yak, for those of you who are new to our show. I'm located outside of San Francisco in Santa Rosa. Mouthpage is an online spiritual community, and we're an online Jewish synagogue. Every Monday through Thursday, we do our live weekday motivations at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And every Friday is our Shabbat service. Check it out. Every six, at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Check out our website, www.mouthpage.com, and check out our YouTube channel, Mouthpage Spiritual Community. Awesome, right? So for those of you who are new to our community, our weekend motivations are designed to help each of you get motivated from a hard day, a hard week, and get ready for the week ahead. I try to make them short and powerful. They usually last about 10 minutes, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. This is wow, right? This is the wow part. We've been going live now for 64 weeks, and we are over 68,000. We're over 68,000. Over 68,000 diehard mouth pages liking us and following us on Facebook. That is amazing. That's awesome. We're not even in April yet. That's the best part. We're not even to April yet. We're easily going to match last year's numbers. We're easily going to match it even before the summer begins. You guys, mwah are the best. Let's continue to push. We want to get over 70,000. Let's push, push, push. The more people we can connect with, the more people we can help grow spiritually. Let's do a little Psalm 156, a little <clears throat> let all that breathes praise God. Hallelujah. This is an amazing little tune, right? You go, Hallelujah. Koha nishama, koha nishama, koha nishama, tehillah, hallelujah. Jews think that when you sing, prayers get to God much faster. So there you go. So if you got to pray, say, Dear God, I love you. Dear God, I want to pray for you, so and so, right? You got to pray. You got to get to it faster. Okay. So we finished last night with our motivation, stop and listen. Hope you enjoyed it. But tonight, 
we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do stop part three, but we're going to do praise. Praise. You know, you go stop, you go look, you go listen. And, and this time we're going to do praise. Stop and praise. So there is a prayer in Hebrew called Ashrei. And it's, it's actually Psalm 145. So let me give you a little bit of taste of it, and then I'll give you my take on it, and then we'll kind of go back and forth. So number one, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Number two, every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Now when I say stop, we're talking about stop and praise. Do we talk about God's name forever and ever? Do we say, God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Something bad happened and you get down on your knees and say, God, I need your help. I praise you. I love you. I praise you. Please, God, get me through this hard day. Get me through whatever's going on in your life. Do we do that? Now, why is that important? Why is that important? And do we do that? So from the minute we wake up, what's the first thing we do? Do we get up and turn on the coffee maker? Is the coffee maker already turned on and all we got to do is just put a little thing in there or we get our coffee and we have to heat it up? Is that the first thing that we do? Do we go to coffee first? Do we go to the shower first? Do we go to the tub first? Do we get dressed first? Do we eat first? What do we do first? Notice how I say, oh, do we brush our teeth first? Do we get our kids ready for school first? Do we put God anywhere in that equation? By the time we're out the door, did we do anything for God whatsoever? God gave us life. God gave us death. God gave us heaven. God gave us hell. God gave us light. God gave us darkness. And we don't even put God remotely close to being first. Heck, our day gets so busy that we might not even put God in at all in our day. Heck, the week gets so busy we might not even put God even close to our week. Heck, it's two weeks now. Our weeks got so busy. Stress, 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 stress. We put. We don't even put God even close. Heck, it's a month later and we don't even put God even near that month. Oh, but it's a holiday, so we'll go and we'll we'll we'll, we'll donate some money and we'll we'll say a few things and then we'll be good. Where where's God at in any of this? Where's God at now? The most powerful being. I see so many people talking about like these superhero movies on TV. I mean, they're standing in line to go see this superhero movie that just came out. Standing in line. When you've got the most powerful being to your beck and call, you're going to go pay money to go see a fake character. A fake character, mind you. Yes, I want to say it. Go ahead, stand up, drop your coffee, whatever it takes over there. I'm going to say it. A fake character. You've got a real one here. For all those people who would say God doesn't exist, you've got a real hero. A real powerful person in your back corner right here. Real powerful. But we're going to stand in line and pay money. Pay money. And then when you get in, then you're going to go pay more money for food. Then you could possibly get shot at when you're there. Because movie theaters do have shootings. You could possibly get injured. But you've got God right here. There's no danger here. Choosing God. You're going to be picked on, sure. Who cares? You might be made fun of, who cares? That doesn't matter. I've got the biggest bodyguard in the world. Say what you want. Do what you want. Pull a gun on me. I don't care. Do what you got to do because God is going to whoop your butt. That's the difference. Do we praise God every day? I have only got to verse 2 of Psalm 145, and I'm already going berserk because where do we put God in our busy lives? We put God nowhere. Now, when I say we, there are some people that do, but there's a lot that don't. We're only at 68,000, so that means there are billions of people who aren't putting God first. Is that is that what I'm taking? Is that how I'm taking this? Or nobody wants to show this show because they look, oh, this weird dude with the hair. Well, I don't know. doesn't matter. Don't mind me. 
Don't mind me. It's about God. This is the most important part of your life. This is the most important part of your day. Does God come first? I, 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 I'm like turning blue to my face. Because does God come first? Does God come first? We're so worried about being sensitive to, to our ears that we're not worried about offending God. Oh my gosh, the most powerful being in the world. I am done even challenging God anymore. I'm not even close to being strong enough to take on God. Not even close. Not even close. Devil's not even. Now, if the devil can't even take on God, how could we? We have no power. None. None. We die of cancer. We die of polio. We die of plague. We die of car accidents. We don't even... We, God doesn't die. So we're going to challenge God? Oh, we got brain damage? Are you kidding me? How could we challenge God? If that's what you want to do, man, for those of you who don't believe in God and you want to challenge, go ahead. I'm not risking it. Not even close. I already know. But I'm saying risking it as, you know, for those who want to mm, mull it over. You know, let me think about this sale. This isn't a sale. This doesn't cost you nothing. There's no sham. There's no scam. There's no signature. There's no contracts. If you don't like God, you can walk away. You're, you don't, you're not, there's no early termination fee. There's no lease. There's no 150 bucks an hour. There's none of that. You either do or you don't. That's, that's the best part. God is free. And yet the most powerful being in the world. Number three in Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Right there, his greatness. No one can fathom. No one can fathom. And I saw some person on on social media yesterday making fun of God greatest 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 on earth his greatness no one can fathom and yet someone a human a human a lowly human a human who has a hundred year lifespan maybe even shorter could be 30 a very small lifespan is going to take on God. What? 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 You watch too much TV, buddy. Too much TV. Because you can't. Just look up and, and I see it raining and I see the clouds blue or black or whatever. I, I know. Wow. This is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is worth going the extra distance for. Number four, one generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Now this is important because what you see, you need to pass on. Now, if you don't see God and if you don't believe in God, you're going to pass that on. Okay, fine. That's what you got to do. You got to do it. But are you surrendering them of that opportunity? Are you telling them what to do? You can pass on saying, hey, this is the majesty of God. If they choose not to believe it, that's up to them. That's up to them. If they choose to believe it, that should be up to them as well. There you go. It's important to teach our children about God because we want our children to know that the rainbow in the sky of what that means and what that represents. It represents that God will not destroy the earth again by natural disaster. It's a remembrance of, so God can say, I remember. God said that to Noah. It's right there in the Torah. It's right there. It's right there. That's what this is about.
Number five, they speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. Okay, check this out. Death, illness, sorrow, hunger, fear. I've seen the worst of the worst of people and they still bond together for God. I've seen, I've seen people who've been laid off or fired from jobs who haven't had work for several months and still give money to homeless people. Other people who are homeless, workless, foodless, just like they are, and they still give them money. The power, the glory of God is so amazing. I know I sound like, you know, the typical, you know, stereotypical minister or pastor or rabbi, however you want to put it. But it's true, the glory, glory of God, because it's true. I see the power. I see how people, knowing that life here is just kicking you so hard, but you're like, you know what? I don't care because I don't care what happens here. I want to go there. I want there. I need to impress that person, that man, that being. I need to impress God right there. I don't need to impress my boss. I don't need to impress their boss. I don't need to impress my supervisor. I need to do my job maybe to, so I can feed my family, but I need to do my job, but I need to impress God. It's important. Why is this so important? Because we feel how many of us, let me back up, how many of us wake up every morning or wake up this morning and go, you just feel kind of, uh. Now, do we feel, uh, because it's, uh, do we feel, uh, because we didn't do anything for God today? Do we feel, uh, because we overate? Do we feel, uh, because we're just kind of wiped out? Do we feel, uh, because evil's got to us? I feel, uh, today. I feel uh today because I feel like I didn't do enough for God yesterday. Now, I did verses of the Ten Commandments. I did Bible verses. I did prayers for others. I did my Hebrew prayers. I did my Hebrew language. I felt like I did a lot. And yet, I still felt that I was missing a few opportunities yesterday. That's why I felt, ugh, today. I still worked. I still did what I needed to do. But I still feel e today. All right, so let me break this down. Let me, let me wrap this up. Stop and praise. We need to praise God and we need to praise others. We need to help other people. We need to help other people so fast, so bad, because the world is swallowing us. The world is just going into a direction. Now, it doesn't matter what direction, because we've seen this direction before. We've seen negativity or evil swoop us up many times. We've read the Bible, we've read it over, we read it over, we passed it on, we passed it on, we passed it on, and we've seen this before. This isn't the first time. We've seen this before, but we got to stay true. We've got to stay true. I've read stories. I've listened to my ancestors that when they were alive, talked about how where they were living in their country, that if you had a Bible in your hand, you would get beat. So if God doesn't exist, why do you care? Why would you physically hurt somebody? Because you know God exists and you're afraid of what God's going to do to you. You're going to punish someone because they believe in God. That's pretty simple to me. That's common sense. Because if you didn't care, if there was no God, then you wouldn't care what they read. Because you'd be like, ah, they're just being lied to. It's like fiction. It's like reading a sci-fi stuff. But if you beat somebody to a bloody pulp, as my great-grandma said that they, had, they did back then, because you had a Bible in your hand or in your house. That means God exists and you, they don't want you to believe in hope. That's what that means. So praise God. 
continue to believe in God, to continue, no matter how hard life is, no matter what kind of lemon or ball or curve or punch or kick that you get in life, suck it up. God is there. Put God first. God will get you through anything. There you go. That's my take. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I go a little nutso, but I'm so passionate about God. Praise to God. Praise is the word of the day. P, praise God daily. Man, praise God. Say good things. R, remain loyal to God. Remain loyal to God no matter how hard. Evil is going to kick you so hard. Man, evil is going to have so many things grab you by the arms, put you in a full Nelson, give you the hammer strike. But don't give up. A, always stay close to God. If you stay close to God, evil's not going to win. I, install God's prayer daily. S, start thanking God daily. Start thanking God daily. And E, evil doesn't care about you. Evil doesn't. All evil cares about is separating you from God. Check that out. All right. Before we end tonight's motivation and prayers, or before we end tonight's motivation, I'd like to end with prayers and birthday wishes. See, I'm talking too fast. All right, let's end with prayers and birthday wishes. Healing prayers for my father-in-law, for my mother-in-law, for Scott, for Suzanne, for April's family, for Christine's family, for Marcus's family, for April's family, for Amy's family, for Jonathan's family, for Sydney, for Ashton, for Tony, for Charlotte, for Vicky, for Liza's father, Laura's mother, Kenny, for Ceci, for Terry, for Jeremiah, Joshua, Jason, Jose, Raul, Jesus, Sam's daughter, Raul, Roger, Robert, Rula, Sam, Mayor, Stephanie, Ralph's mother, Greg's aunt, Sandy's son, John, Melissa, Kim, Paul, Paula, Pablo, Mark, Eric, Rabbi Marvin Perlman's family, Rabbi Shergerman, and his family. Amen. And happy birthday to Randy, to Aldo, to Asma, and to his rant. How good and pleasant is it for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Psalm 133. I want to thank you all for watching tonight, for being the best part of Mouth Page. Oh, man, I'm so pumped that we're almost at 70,000. So thank you so much. I love you so much. I love you all. Help others to be nice. God bless Lila Tov. Check out our website, www.mouthpage.com. Check out our YouTube channel, Mouthpage Spiritual Community, and check out all of our services that we offer. Check us out tomorrow. I will see you all tomorrow, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. God bless. Lila Tov. Help others to be nice. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.